He's got it! Touchdown! San Francisco! Wow. Feels great, baby! Flim flammery. Ahead on Sports Center, where that trick play and George Kittle's epic catch and run rank in the top NFL plays of Week 14. Ryan Clark's three biggest takeaways from Sunday, including why this may finally be the year that the Patriots' dominance ends. Plus, Odell Beckham Jr.'s disappointing first season in Cleveland could also be his last. What injury and lack of chemistry may mean for his future. That's coming up. DL1 top stories on our Sports Center Sprint College Football's Final Four is set. Pair of unbeaten's going at it. Ohio State taking on Clemson in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Clemson has a 28-game win streak, is seeking its third national championship in four years. Kirk Herbstreit, what do you like about this matchup? The Fiesta Bowl. We can't wait to see Ohio State against Clemson. Both these teams can score a lot of points. Both have big name star power, especially on the offensive side of the ball. What I love about the game is both teams are going to show up in a bad mood. Ohio State felt that they should be number one seed, not have to travel all the way out west to Phoenix to take on Clemson. So they're going to show up in a bad mood. And we know all about Dabo Sweeney. He feels that his team as a defending champ has been disrespected. They finish at number three. So let's get them out to Phoenix and let's see who the better team actually is. And in this corner, the other semifinal matchup, top-ranked LSU gets Oklahoma in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Tigers open as a double-digit favorite, and the over-under started at a stunning 78 and a half points. Kirk Herbstreit concurs on the track meet feel of this game. What well, Oklahoma and LSU in the Peach Bowl expect a lot of points. We know about Joe Burrow. He's had a magical year. Probably going to go on to win the Heisman Trophy. They're scoring 47 points a game. How does Oklahoma compete? Jalen Hurts is going to have to have a huge game. Running and throwing. This, I think, to me, the biggest factor could be Oklahoma's ability to protect the football. Has hurt them. Been an Achilles heel down the stretch. Last six games, minus seven in turnover margin. They turned it over themselves 12 times in that span. If OU wants to stay up with Burrow, they better take care of the ball and try to take it away from Burrow a few times, see if they can give him a chance to win. Happen to have an LSU alum. God, right this here. is such a beautiful day. The uh, lights are brighter here. The colors are more vivid. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. We'll give you 17 Those seconds. Those colors in particular. Your thoughts on LSU being number one and the path they have. To well, you know what? Time. I'm extremely excited. I think it's, it's obvious, you know, you didn't want to have to play Clemson. Clemson is a team that enters the year number one. They go undefeated. And you heard Dabo Sweeney talk about it a little bit. And so it was about getting to play Oklahoma and playing a defense that's not as good as some of these other teams. And we also get to go right back to Atlanta. It's Atlanta and, and then home if Joe Burrow can continue to do the things that he's done, done all season. I think what helps LSU, you play Texas A&M, you hold them to seven. You go against the Georgia Bulldogs, they're number four team in the country. They only scored 10 points. I think the defense was kind of the, the thing that they were splitting Ohio State and LSU on because obviously Ohio State has Chase Young and they had been so dominant all year. So it was really huge to be number one because of your path. And I don't think anybody in the country wanted to have to play Clemson and attempt to beat them and then follow that up with Ohio State. So those guys have a much tougher, tougher path to the championship. Yeah. It was longer than 17 seconds, but we'll yeah. grant you. Well, it was about LSU. I know. That's why I don't think you know why he's telling like, him like, 17 nobody seconds. Listen, I'm not here for this NFL stuff. I'm with Anytime you. the purple and gold I goes up, they take precedent. I hear you. All right. Let's Gosh. go from the purple and gold to the black and gold. I don't want to talk about football. Fine. All Let's right. do basketball. Okay. No, we're going football first. Uh, the team who won the Super Bowl with Steelers get the Cardinals. Deontay Johnson going to field the punt. The, the punt. Defenders field the punt. That's like punk, but with a T. It was pretty good. Huh? <laughs> it was pretty good, I thought. <laughs> Defenders falling in front of 85 yards to the house. This is huge. The Pittsburgh Steelers has been, have been finding ways to win games as their offensive stars are out. This is just another way to put points on the board. First, punt returns to Antonio Brown in 2015 against the Colts. Steelers get the win 23-17. Broncos and Texans drew Locke to Noah Fant 14 yards to the house. Listen, Drew Locke was a guy that set records in the SEC. We saw him go for over 303 touchdowns in his first road game as a starter. Uh, following Texans drive, Deshaun Watson. And then, what? What the heck? <laughs> well, this is what happens when you let a guy go in free agency. He comes back to Houston, and he haunts you. Listen, this is the pitchback. It seemed as, as the Houston Texans stopped playing football. 
Denver Broncos get a point there. Totally dominate the Texans after they beat the Patriots last week. Titans and Raiders play action. Fake Ryan Tannehill launches a deep one. A.J. Brown, 91 yards. Here's my question when I see A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. One, who is the strength coach at Ole Miss? Because he and D.K. Metcalf yeah. are huge. They are. Also, he's made huge plays all season. This is a big play from Ryan Tannehill with the throw from the pocket. This is a different team. Third quarter, tied to 21. Derrick Henry gets the handoff. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Bro, his hamstring was hurt, and people were still scared to tackle him. He's huge. That's why. Two Mark Davis is going to change his haircut now just please, because of this game. <laughs> Titans win 42 <laughs> 21. They're right where they normally are in the mix for a playoff berth for this Ryan Tannehill, who's been the impetus. Since becoming the starter in Week 7, Tannehill boasts the second best record by a starting QB, the most yards per attempt, and the second highest completion percentage. Tannehill, oh, by the way, is a free agent at the end of the season. So from Ryan to Ryan, Titans 6 and 1 since the Week 7 when Tannehill was named starting QB. Why is he performing at such a high level? You know, earlier you had a little a little slip of the tongue when we were doing the highlights, mm -hmm. and you said, you know, the funk. Mm -hmm. You know what? This team Thanks was Thanks for bringing that back up. Yeah, this team wasn't even dink and dunk. They were dink and funk when they had Marcus Mariota. This was a team that couldn't create big plays or chunk plays in the passing game, and Ryan Tannehill has changed that. I remember early on in the preseason when Ryan Tannehill would enter the game, I started to see that there should have been a quarterback controversy in Tennessee, but they wanted to see what Marcus Mariota could do. In the last seven games, Ryan Tannehill has pushed the ball down the field. It's also opened up things for Derrick Henry and the run game, and we knew what this team would be defensively under Mike Vrabel, and so now they have two games against the Houston Texans left and they play the New Orleans Saints and when you hear those things you think to yourself that's a tough road but not for this team the way that they can control the ball how well he is playing as well at the quarterback position and defensively this is a team that can win at least two of those games if not all three I'm sure the Dolphins are saying where was this Ryan Tannehill when <laughs> we had him I mean he wasn't this guy was he I mean, well, maybe the Jets know why okay